if you don't have customers, how are you in business? And you, you're just sitting there like a mad scientist trying to come up with all these beautiful products that nobody wants to buy. And you know, it's literally, it's, it's insane. Just like stop everything you're doing because nothing you do actually matters. The only thing that matters is where your customers actually spending their money right now. Um, so invest more time in understanding them and then give them what they want. And it's just something as simple as, hey, I called you the other day. You said this is what you're interested in. You said this was the price. I've got it. You still want it? And they'll be like, yes, no. I mean, they were, you've already given them reasons. And it's all the reasons that they gave you. You're not making it up. Do you want to avoid becoming a slave to your business? That's what we're going to be speaking about in this chapter of the business library. How to avoid those things. Marlon August is an expert at that absolutely great guy the great guest we have on today and just before i start us off this episode is of course sponsored by a free content marketing course that's down below including all my loads links so feel free to go down check it out if you hear something that you like so first of all how did this entrepreneurial journey start for you hey mads thank you so much for having me on um really I'm, well, I'm glad to just be here and to, to, to share part of my journey. Um, yeah, look, how I got into entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. Well, luckily enough, my parents were entrepreneurs. Um, I was brought up in a house of entrepreneurs. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. So um, I was lucky enough to, and he was really, really, really successful. Um, and it was interesting, you know, watching my grandfather who was very successful um out in mozambique and then um and then you know watching my mom and my father start from scratch and because they left mozambique came to south africa and my mother's south african so she had gone to mozambique met my father come came back to this side and they you know from scratch um had to start something and and i mean obviously they 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 had worked in businesses and then from there um decided to venture off on their own but by the time um i was old enough i immediately got started in the family business and just started to sort of learn from there and and just never look back after that i never got employed again <laughs> well that's the best place to learn like learning through doing at least in my eyes i know people are different 100 percent, 100 percent. i it's actually it's actually the way i I think, you know, like it, it has to, you have to do it. Um, and that's, um, we can't, we can sit and think about things as much as we want, but when are we going to, when are we going to get some stuff done? Yeah. I might say that powerful that we can just think about things and then they do actually magically do get done where you actually need to, to go out and, and do it. And yeah, theory and practice, they're different. So. We, I always encourage people to listen to this podcast to like go out and implement one thing that you like from this episode. Don't want it like to overcomplicate it, really. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of business owners do. I don't know what your opinion is on keeping it simple compared to the complex. Yeah, I think, I think we as human beings, we. Well, depending on our, on how we all, because we're all different, right? And we all behave differently and we all make these assumptions. And sometimes it's because we want it too big. And I know that's sometimes my problem. <laughs> you know, I want to just, I want to impact so much that I want to add so many things. And then before I know it, it just becomes a, just a complicated mess that I can't actually, that I don't have any control of. Um, and then, or, or just, it either blow goes up in flames or never gets started. Um, for some other people, you know, they, 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 they psych themselves out almost, you know, they just think about all these things, all these things, all these things, and just exhaust the hell out of them and they can't even get started or they, or just, it, it just becomes too complicated. So yeah, look, uh, the, keeping it simple makes the most sense. Um, and, and, and if it's, and usually the best answer is the simplest answer. So if you can just simply yeah. answer it, if you can just simply get it done, then, you know, and you, and you see like the things that are out there, it's like, wow, how did these get done? And you just look at it. It's like, actually, it's very, very simple. 
So true. So true. To that point, to that point. So I was, I, I don't know how true it is today for Apple, but I was watching on Instagram and um, it was Steve Jobs talking and they were like, and, and they, they were basically asking about the hierarchy within the business. And he was basically saying that there's literally one manager for each and every department. And I mean, and he literally said that, that Apple at the time was a huge startup. And he says, that's how we operate. We operate like one huge startup. We have a three hour meeting once a, me a week with all of those managers and everybody is accountable to everybody even. So now at that stage, he's like at that level, everybody's accountable to everybody. And then that filters down into right through the operation. He's like, yeah. we're just a huge startup. So it's, it's, it's simple. I like the accountability. I think that's a, a huge point to have in, in anything you want to be successful with and go with in, because it helps with those days when you not feel like it. So one of the reasons why I chose to start like documenting my journey on the day to day on Instagram, just shooting a video because it's out for the world to say, I don't yeah. want to look like an idiot too many days. And if I stop doing it, then it's also, oh, he just quit. And so it keeps me going. Tell me, tell me about it. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware that that's what you do. Um, I'll definitely go out and have a look. But would you mind sharing that with me? Like, what does that look like? Um, in terms of documenting your journey on a regular on Instagram? I mean, is that literally just like a talking head type video? Or what does that look like? The ones on Instagram has just been besides one, I'm trying to experience with things recently, but the 104 others I've done so far have just been me at the end of the day, preferably taking the camera, taking the phone, just recording a face video, just going through the main things that I went over. And just doing that, it, not getting massive exposure, it's getting a little out there, but it's, I'm doing that much as much for me. And also I know how cool it's going to be in like 10 years. 100%. Because it's like a big of a, a part of like a bigger plan. And then when anybody asks me how, then I can just go, go here, go look. Well, I think, I think it's so valuable because, you know, there's these stages in, in, in your business that you do really, really awesome things, right? And if you like just have to show that time, it'll be like, well, you're successful. So, you know, of course you would, you, you would show that. You just want to show the best sort of parts of it. But there's so much pain <laughs> that you've been through just to get to that point. Um, and sometimes even those awesome moments are super painful, you know, and, and, and the thing is most people wouldn't have gotten that if they didn't see that back end stuff that you had to go through. So exactly. I think it's a great idea. And sometimes actually the videos where I go out, say things suck today, didn't go to plan completely abort mission, whatever. Those are actually the videos that most people like, because it's so weird. For somebody to just be out there publicly saying that, you're used to the other type of content. This went great. Do you want my secret strategy to success? Compared to, I failed or didn't succeed, didn't go to plan, whatever word you want to use. That's a whole lot of conversation. I don't want to go too far into it, in what word to use for that. But one of the things like, you hear when people want to start a business, they want financial freedom, location freedom, a lot of freedoms. But I've seen multiple on, on nearly as many occasions, less freedom. Like they end up becoming a slave to their business. Like how do people go out and avoid that fate and build the right foundation from the start actually? Yeah, it's a great question. And um, something that, that, Many people, it's very easy to fall into the trap. If you've ever, have you ever read the book, um, The E-Myth? No. The, e, the letter E, Myth. Um, so, so the thing is, The E-Myth is a great book for anybody. Um, I've forgotten the, Michael, Michael Gerber. So, so he talks about it 
and he says he says it quite eloquently in the book that you need to the problem is we all start a business because we have a skill yes and and as a as a skilled person we we want to now into the marketplace the problem is when we're in a business now but as that skill for example let's just say i'm a graphic designer and i work in a graphic design house now what happens is i then like i'm like I, perhaps let's just say i get wind of the of the invoices and i'm like what and that's what they're charging them and this is how much i'm earning no way i'm gonna go do it myself the problem is once we move over to this other space it's not just me as a technician because me, I have a skill, I can be technically sound. When there's another person that generally, space, um, there's another person that's in that environment and that person, which would be in the, in the house, you know, in the design house, there would be a manager of sorts, right? Somebody that's sort of directing that traffic, right? Um, and, and then there's a person above that person, which is more the visionary, the person that, um, is is paying attention to bringing these things together, right? So the problem is once you move, you, you've been in the woods, so you've been the technician. But when you move out into becoming a business owner, you now have to play all three parts. And that becomes tricky because now you have to play this game of expansion and then straight to contraction where you're focusing on this one thing. You know, and and that is the myth. That's how you easily become a slave because, and it's happened so many times in this in my business where I would go out, farm, get the business, come in with with all this excitement, with all this energy, with all this money, but then I've got to manage the worst person in the world to manage, and then I've got to also then do the work. It's like it's it's I've got to go do the work. So I started with this excitement of pleasing a customer, getting a customer, then I have to go and make sure that the work gets done. And then I've got to manage the fact that it gets done on time. It's just like, you know, most of us are not so inclined. And then we're not even talking about the management of funds, the management of, of, of cash flow, because now I have to jump out again and go and farm. Um, I've got to be the communicator. I've got to do all these things. And as entrepreneurs, we have to wear all these hats and, Unfortunately, when we're starting a business, we have these grandier ideas of becoming big, you know, a multi-million dollar business. But the reality is for many people, we don't understand what that means. Um, and, and, and when we get caught in that trap of literally the cycle of I uh, get the clients I, I, I become the bottleneck. I can't really get it up. And, 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 and then I got to go out, get the clients. And then it's just this never ending cycle that, that is trapped. Yeah. Cause it, you don't get into like that smooth rhythm where you get like do a little bit of client work, do a little bit of sales. I can relate to all in and then, oh no. All in. Oh no. And then you're kind of always in the cycle and then one of the three is missing. hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, and, and, and you really need to have a lot of diligence and, and this is why we work ridiculous amount of hours. Um, and which is, it's something it's awesome. Cause I, I do love you know, entrepreneurship, I do love building a business, but you're not really building a business if, if you're in survival mode. Um, and, and, and if you just need the business in order to live, um, in order to, um, not really have something that, that, that when you're growing, when you've got people that help you grow, you know, that when you've got other people that are tuned into the same vision as you and, are helping you, they're either bringing people to you or they're bringing, um, or they helping taking the load off, you know, that's when you're growing and, um, finding that, that, that balance between the two is, I believe what business is all about, you know? Um, so, so getting in that trap of like, Oh, I see something I can, 
you know, it's like it's like looking at a plane flying and then saying, oh, I can fly better than that pilot. It's it, it's just not, it just doesn't make it. Then you sit in the cockpit and you're like, what the hell are all these buttons? That's, exa <laughs> that's exactly what happens with us trying to start a business. Yes. So true. Like, I can do this better. Why am I only making this much when I know the person I'm working for is making three times as much for that time. Um, not taking everything into an account, which is very hard from the outside, unless you have experience. You can't. You, you can't. I mean, like, I know so many people that complain about their bosses and they say, oh, you know, they bad bosses. They bad managers. They forget that these people are human beings, number one. So they make mistakes. They... You know, they have good, bad sides. Um, the other side is nobody's perfect. So even you in that position, you can look and covet their position. But the reality is that everybody has is not great at something. And so, 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 so at the end of the day, if you yourself, if you just have a bigger vision for yourself, and we, and I believe if we all start looking at business differently, um, and especially in this world where now there's a lot more entrepreneurs in the space, there, there's a lot more people to work with. If we find better ways to collaborate, we can we can really start to do things differently. Yeah, that's it. Makes things so much easier. You don't not trying to to do everything. And I I guess one of the good things when it comes to to starting a business is really knowing your strengths and weaknesses and not being afraid to ask for help but besides that what is like some other ways when you're starting out for audience they can kind of build in those processes to avoid being a slave i would say invest more time in working on what people want because if you understand what people want, number one, and then you have taken time to connect with those people just based on what they want, and then give them that and make sure that you're not the reason why they don't get it, then, then you are starting to build something. Uh, a, a, a typical example is I started building chatbots and, and getting deeper into the AI space. I do not touch a chatbot. I have a very vague idea on how it works. Only because, now I know how it works, but I have a very vague idea of how to make it work. Um, I understand I can I can read a little bit of HTML, a little bit of Python, a little bit of PHP, but I'm, don't ask me to debug anything. You're wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> but the reality is, if there's there's certain people that do that well, and there's certain people that could help you exp like so for example what ends up happening is i find people that actually they want to build chatbots hey you you can build a chatbot yeah okay well can you build a chatbot is the question and i'm like yeah i can build chatbots yes yes no problem ai put that all in there yes and then and then from there i'm going off and i found now a customer I found out, I literally asked that customer, how much are you willing to pay for this? And they tell me the price. And I'm like, okay, now what I need to go and do is find somebody else who's willing to, to do it for less than that. And boom, the profit's in the middle. And That's once- really get, simple. Really simple. So you start, so what we do, the problem with the Bing technician, I'm good at designing. I charge 750, um, I'm, I'm in South Africa, so Rand, you know, um, or well, let's call it like, let's say $10. It's not $10 equivalent, but let's just say $10. <laughs> I charge a bit more. It's more. Yeah, it's more. 
But but let's just say I, I charge ten dollars per hour, and and at the end of the day, um, I'm gonna you know that's all I need to live. But the problem is we're not taking into consideration because my time needs to have profit over and above that to run and grow the organization, right? So so the, when I'm looking at my pricing, I'm literally saying to, I mean, I've got partners that I'm, I say to them, okay, look, we've, we are agreed on a specific rate for these things. Um, and then when I go out to the market, I'm going out with this price that we're all well agree, well aware of. We all agreed upon that pricing structure. And then my job is to bring in the business and manage that they get the stuff done. So in terms of my agency, what we really do, there are certain things that we do in-house and certain processes that we're building in-house because that's what makes our brand, um, you know, better for our customers. But then we have certain other people that work, that we outsource to, that we work along with. And we say, hey, listen, we, we're building these things together. You can build the way you build. But when we work together, this is, this is how we're going to deliver this, if that makes sense. So, so then, then it just literally comes, I make my money in the middle, they do the delivery, and I make sure that the customer gets exactly what they promise, what we promise them. And boom, business is done. And I can continue to stay in the front because I'm the type of person that likes to be in front of people. I like to connect with people. I like to help them strategize a better way of doing business. And then, but then I'm not, I'm not now running to YouTube after that to figure out how do I build this thing? It's just ludicrous. I'll be sitting there for hours. So this is, people need to start changing that. Like you say, understand who you are, understand better about what you, as who you are and how you, how you best interact with people. Um, if you are the introvert, maybe you should be, you know, learning the code and stuff and connect yourself to someone that's out of, um, you know, extroverted and willing to speak and things like that. And then that's, then you don't have to worry about the business. You can just stay in your cave and, and do your work, you know, and, and this is, we're in this world today where you don't need to be part of a bigger, a huge, big machine. You can just be connected to a whole lot of people that can bring you that type of work. Um, you know, that's, so I would say, get out of yourself, connect with people that, that leverage your strengths and instead just think of business the opposite way around well that that could be worth a lot of money what you just gave away there that, that was a whole blueprint step by step just do this do this do this i love the simple formula find thing find customer find something a way to make money on that the, the reality is, Mads, that even while it's simple, most people are scared. So I'm like part of a group. We working with, we work with various incubators. So we, we're working with various entrepreneurs, people that some people that have just, and I, uh, they're still in the ideation phase, others that are running business. You know, most people are still too scared to speak to customers. And I'm like, guys, if you don't have customers, how are you in business? And you, you're just sitting there like a mad scientist trying to come up with all these beautiful products that nobody wants to buy. And it's just like, are you mad? <laughs> you know, it's literally, it's, it's insane. And, and it's just like, stop everything you're doing because nothing you do actually matters. The only thing that matters is where your customers are actually spending their money right now. You know, um, so invest more time in understanding them and then give them what they want. And it's just something as simple as, hey, I called you the other day. You said this is what you're interested in. You said this was the price. I've got it. You still want it? And they'll be like, yes, no. I mean, they were, you've already given them reasons and it's all the reasons that they gave you. You're not making it up. You know, why not? I guess the only question I need to ask to complete the formula is where do we go out and find the people to have the conversations with that becomes customers? Great question. Um, so most of the time, whenever I'm starting something new, 
um, regardless of what it is, at any given moment in time, I'll probably ask 90%, most of the people that I've asked, they probably know those people and have those people on their phone. So 90% of the time, just go right back to where, what we like to call um, low hanging fruit. So most likely you know of, or have an idea of your ideal customer. And you just need to have the guts to call that person up, show, say to them, listen, this is what I'm doing. I heard uh, in my mind, in my imagination, I think you'd be interested in something like this. And because they trust you, they're, good, they're willing to tell you the truth. You know, unlike many customers, they'll just like tell you whatever to get you out the door and then never speak to you again. You know, but the people that actually care about you, they'll tell you the truth, not like listen outside of your family, of course. Um, you, you know, go to people that are, you know, people, friends, people that know each other. Because if you speak to a friend and say, hey, do you know someone perhaps like this? Sure. You're like, oh, or you seem like someone like this. And then, you know, it starts the conversation. Even if you're not selling to them, it gives you an idea of what's going on. And you can start to formulate your idea from there. And it's, it's like maybe like five, 10 phone calls and boom, you, before you know it, you've got it. Um, and it's, it's happened to me so many times. It, it doesn't actually matter what the product is. We, we've always found a way to get to build the ideal customer base because then once you know who, you can then figure out where, you know, where these people are. And then you can really start to figure out how you can get to where they, they, they end up going to, you know? Um, a simple example is, and it's a great, uh, it wasn't like, like a nice middle that um, my wife and I, we found. So we, we decided to go a different route in terms of trying to acquire other businesses. And what we decided to do was a thing called seller finance, which, which is more of an American way of, of uh, some Americans, they understand that, but it's not normal in, in South Africa and in Africa. Um, but basically it's where the, the a business is up for sale, but the, the actual seller is what's financing the deal instead of, and, and they know, so you, you give them an offer that, that they basically, you, you start running the business immediately as a purchase, but they get paid on a regular basis plus, plus, you know, what would be a loaned, um, interest, if that makes sense. So they make the sale plus interest over a period of time, you get to immediately get your feet wet, build the business, grow the business, start making that extra money that they weren't making. And, and then you, you, you actually, you buy in the business literally on a monthly basis from them. So what we, we, we found was a little middle piece. So, um, it was, a, it's a hair salon, so a beauty salon. And the, the difference is now where the middle is, we found a way that we could connect a very, very popular makeup artist to come in and give the ladies some education, free education on how they should be applying their beauty products. That'll be, that will actually make them the most beautiful, you know, women love their makeup, right? That actually they can make their natural, give themselves a natural look, but still be beautiful, right? And 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 use the right products and all those types of things. So we could we get to marry those two things, and at the same time we get to build our audience, connect to a bigger audience, and and still make sales, um, and and provide free education in that in this new space. So simple things like that just allows us to to very easily leverage, leverage, leverage space, leverage, um, making money in different ways and connecting two unlikely sources together. I'd like to dig a little bit more into, you said free education. Yes. And I, I love, you said influencer, getting mm -hmm. them in, getting their attention. And then you said free, and my mind went free attention. I like that. 
exactly. one of my favorite subjects in the world. So how did you go about structuring that deal to it get them to come in? It's so just it in... go out and be an awesome person. Is that the answer? No, it's 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 about look. It's about keeping your eyes open, always asking questions, and and always being inquisitive about what's going on. We we set out an intention. We wanted to grow. We wanted to get another business. And and the the only the only thing I said to my wife I said we are not. I'm not spending one cent on a new business. I mean, Robert Kiyosaki says anybody who spends their own money on an investment is lazy. And, and I was like, you know, that was, that was because you know what he does? He uses other people's money, right? He uses the bank's money, he uses, he uses investors money. And when I heard that it, it started to shift the way, because now what we'll do is we'll use it as an excuse. If I don't have the money, I will not invest. Right. So I think that the money needs to exist first before I invest in something. But but there's something else. It's about understanding value. So when we, the, the reality is that the person who wanted to sell, they want out and they want their money out. So the question is, when you look at the deal, and this is after looking at various deals, right? So we look at a, a number of deals and we start to weigh that up. And then it's about having the guts to say, listen, Let's just change this deal together because, first of all, it's not worth what you're saying it is, but I'm willing to pay you close to what you say you want, and I'm willing to do it in a time frame that's amicable for both of us. And you can, and there's no point, there's no point that you will stop earning. That's number one. Then it's like, okay, how are we going to actually generate this income out of this existing platform? And it's like, well, it's very simple. You you start with what you have. So we 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 went immediately let's let's go and re-engage the people that have already been buying number one let's go and tell them that we're bringing somebody that can that is super popular that we, she's not really popular in terms of in terms of like online where she's popular is is with the credibility because she's she works in the in the in the tv stations here right so immediately where she works has just taken her is, is part of the credibility and we can just say well she's done amazing stars like x y and z and then that's that's what really attracts a lot of the attention we we show the proof you know that this is what the makeup looked like before and this is what it looks like when this lady's in, and then it's like literally day and night and those types of things is what and already because those people already have trust we don't have to convince them of anything they're willing to invite others to come with them plus not only that we tell them you know not only will we help you do your makeup we will also treat you you know so they expecting an extravagant time right and that gives us that that space to now upsell to to really talk to them and connect with customers because people buy from people they know trust and like and you come with new people so we're going to impress you and that's that's the way you just you you engage the people you keep that attention there and then you 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 share with them something that they can that they can take away with them beautifully said i think that's a, a whole blueprint of how to be successful in business a few gaps in there Sure, can't sure, frame, sure. Can't, we can't frame it up in 30 minutes. So if people want to connect with you to fill out those gaps, where should they reach you at? Where, what's the best platforms? Um, yeah, I'm on pretty much all of the platforms. Um, LinkedIn, you can get me at Marlon August. Um, I think in Marlon August, Oli on, 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 on Instagram. I mean, on um, LinkedIn. On Instagram, um, you can at, at Marlon BHA. Facebook, Twitter, all Marlon BHA. Um, so yeah, you can get me there and my website, um, storyadvantage.co. That, that's the agency website. So yeah, you can connect with me in all of those places. I'll definitely recommend anybody listening to this. Go up. There's so much knowledge there. We've blown away. If you haven't already, 
thank you again for coming on and, and taking the time to have this conversation with me today. I appreciate it. I oh, appreciate you, Matt. Um, looking forward to connecting with you even more.